closed it noiselessly behind them and disappeared inside. Chapter 22, and the winner is, I'll bet they're gonna rob the school. Did anyone get a good look at either of them? One had dark hair. No, he was wearing a cap. He was short, he was tall. They were both tall. No, they weren't. One was tall and one was short. And one was fat. They were both fat. What kind of witnesses are we anyway? Well, they were both wearing white Nikes. Everyone turned and stared at Wally. How do you know that? I just paid attention. Should we climb up there and wake the principal? No. What if they've got a gun? Officer Clay won't be back for a half hour. We've got to go home and get Dad. Suddenly, the hour after midnight seemed about as exciting as it could get. After Jake let them in with his key, he said, Wally, go upstairs and wake Dad. What? Why me? Just because Josh and I are going to write down all the things we saw, and we have to do it while our memories are fresh. It always happened this way. Wally always seemed to get stuck with the stuff nobody else wanted to do. It might be exciting telling Dad about the men stealing the principal's keys, but it sure wouldn't be any fun waking him up. Their father was a deep sleeper, and if anything else except a police beeper woke him up, he was liable to be grouchy. Wally went up the stairs, stepping extra hard on the second from the bottom step, which always made the loudest squeak, hoping that might wake his dad. His parents' door was closed, and he tapped lightly once, then twice, and nothing happened. The bed squeaked like someone turning over. Who is it? Mother asked. It's Wally. Can I come in? What's the matter, Wally? The Malloy girls are downstairs. Caroline saw something. We all did. What do you mean, Caroline saw something? You know the imagination that girl has. Wally, it's almost two in the morning. We saw some men go in the school. Was that? It's Wally, dear. All the kids are downstairs and they think they saw something. So how do you know they weren't teachers? I don't, but they sneaked up on the roof after Officer Clay left and took the keys from the principal's pants. We watched them. Then they took the keys and went inside the school. Where are they now? They're still in the school, we think. Wally's father grabbed his robe. They all hurried down the stairs to the kitchen. He bellowed like a bull. Everyone listened as they sat around the kitchen table with Mr. Hatford as he made a call on the radio. Bogdan, my kids say two men stole the principal's keys and are over in the school right now. Do you read me? Roger. Officer Clay is only two blocks away from the school right now. I'll send him over. You may need backup. My guess is they're after the computers. I can be there in three minutes. Won't be necessary. I got Frank only a mile away. We got it covered. Stay right there, Tom. We may want more information from the kids. Mrs. Hatford made cocoa for everyone while Jake and the others described everything they had seen. Then the radio crackled. Can the kids give us a good description of men? Fat, thin, tall, short, dark hair, cap, you name it. No, no two of them can agree, but both men were wearing white Nikes. There were the sounds of several voices, Officer Clay's radio transmitting as well. So what have you got? Well, there are two middle-aged men, medium height, pudgy, white. What about hair? Both of them ball as could be. So much for the star witness, but one had on a cap. I said he was wearing a cap, said Eddie. You said Caroline Malloy saw him first. Is she still there? Yep. Put her on, please. Hello? Good job, Caroline. You got a sharp eye to catch what you saw in the dark and save the school a heap of money. They had four computers all stacked up ready to go. Thank you. It was the boys who knew what to do, though. It was Jake who said we should go get Dad. Well, all of you get the credit then. I can almost forgive what you did at the police station. You kids get some sleep now. It'll be all about in the news tomorrow. But, but, shouldn't we stay up and wait for the photographer? I'm not waking up any photographer over these two losers. I'll call in a report myself, but you'll get the name in, your name in the paper along with the others. Don't you worry. The next day, it indeed was in the news, and when the Hatford boys and the Malloy girls got to school, there was the principal sitting on the roof in his pajamas eating his Wheaties. He was reading the morning paper. After dinner that evening, as the Hatford boys were doing their homework, the Malloy's girls rang the bell. We've got news, Caroline said. Yeah, what's up? Guess what? You know what day this is? The last day of April, and I just got a phone call from a man up near Philippi who said he found my bottle, so I'm queen for a day beginning tomorrow, said Beth. Ugh, yeah, said Jake. How do, you, how do we know you're telling the truth? How do we know the bottle wasn't found right here in Buckman? Because I got his phone number, and you can check with him yourself. Okay, but how do we know that that was one of the bottles we all started with? What did he say was in it? A matchbox cover, right? Right. Okay, what do we have to do? I've made a list, said Beth. If you think you worked as hard at the police station, Jake, 
Wait till you see what I'm gonna make you do. Wash all my sneakers, type my book report, check my homework, polish my toenails, mend my jeans, paint my bookcase, transplant the ivy, clean the goldfish water. She interrupted with a ringing of a phone. Could I speak with Peter? A girl asked. Peter, for you, a girl. Oh, Peter? Hello? Yeah? What? Yeah? It's a girl. She found my bottle. She was walking her dog. Where? 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 Up near Tiger Lake. Tiger Lake? Way up there? Peter, your bottle went farthest of all. <coughs> You're king for a day. Hello? Caroline grabbed the phone. Hello? Can you tell me what else was in the bottle? Oh, yeah. It's a button, all right. A Girl Scout button. Thanks. But I had it all figured out. I knew exactly what I wanted each of you to do. That's the way the ball bounces and the cookie crumbles. Oh, well, we had the baseball games to look forward to, and there will always be another time to be queen, Beth. So, Peter, what do you want us to do? We're your servants, your slaves. Ride me around on your shoulders. As Jake moved slowly around the room, Peter slouched. Bake me a double batch of cookies, Eddie. Bake me a giant batch of brownies. Peter, you're going to get sick. Make me a great big pan of chocolate marshmallow fudge. What about us? What do we have to do? For a whole day, you have to take me everywhere you go and let me do whatever you do. Easy. You have to let me read all your comic books and play all your computer games. It's a deal. I get to borrow your skateboards and your felt tip pens and your baseball cards and your binoculars. Is that all? I get all your leftover Halloween candy. So, and one more thing, you've got to clean out my closet. No, cried Jake and Josh and Wally together. A deal's a deal, said Eddie. Peter is king for a day. That's the way the ball bounces. That's the way the cookie crumbles, said Caroline. All right. Make sure you take your quiz on the girls' takeover. It is, I know it's backwards, but it is quiz number 64035. Hope you enjoyed it.